Hello and welcome back to my Sandbox EDB series in KSP 1.0.2. This time we are all about ore and trucking. What you see here is a prototype mobile ore drilling truck being tested for its maneuverability and safety ahead of being deployed to the moon. It has numerous features including the fuel cell on top of the ore storage tank which provides power for the single tail mounted drilling unit. This is not the deployment configuration for the truck. It will have Rockamax 2477 engines on its sides so that it can descend safely to the lunar surface after being detached from its descent engine and stage, as well as an RCS system. Uh, it will also have an adapter so that it can be mounted properly in the launcher's fairing. Because it is being tested to its breaking point, there are no Kerbals on board, but we hope that the innovative crew cabin mounted on top of the Rovemate probe module currently controlling the vehicle will keep any Kerbals running safe. We will be testing its rollover tipping point uh, at one of the KSC's many slopes here. Uh, you can see it traveling at a reasonable clip on the surface of Kerbin. However, of course, on the surface of the moon, there is less grip and so braking and acceleration times are, are lengthy and the RCS system that will be added will hopefully uh, introduce some more downforce which will be necessary and here we go here is the tipping test and okay uh, coming on that slope at a pretty high velocity there a very typical sort of profile for a tip over and we see if we can uh, zoom a little bit closer there that the crew cabin seems to be alright let's check it out uh, in a little greater detail. Yes, yes, uh, it looks like any Kerbals would have probably survived that particular mishap. So a good test for this initial prototype system. The crew cabin is actually a standalone module and here you see it with a much smaller load than it was carrying with the ore truck. Uh, here it's just carrying a simple thrust pack which will allow it to skip along on the lunar surface and otherwise perhaps even get into orbit. Uh, so here we are going to be testing its safety and making sure that Kerbals will survive any sort of mishap that might occur once the thrust pack is engaged. And now on the surface of Kerbin, it does not produce enough thrust to actually lift off initially, so it's going to have to burn off some of its substantial fuel in order to actually uh, make this happen. So here we go, burning off some fuel. It'll have to burn off its uh, load of mount propellant as well. The mount propellant is of course also there to give some downforce on the moon so that it can get grip and make sure it can do turns and accelerate and brake properly. Okay here we go we're approaching the point where enough mount propellant has been burned off and enough liquid fuel and oxidizer has been burned off so that this can lift off of the surface of Kerbin now and here we see it rising up fairly well balanced. It doesn't look like the RCS has to uh, be used in order to maintain balance, but now we're going to have a crash test here. It's coming down, tipping forward, the worst possible situation for a crew cabin. It's safe to say that uh, smashing right forward on the crew cabin would be the worst possible situation, and yet uh, here we see that it seems like the seating is safe. Uh, we could not afford crash test dummies for this, but it looks like it looks like they would have been all right. So a successful test for this configuration of the, the little truck as well. And so the crew cabin, highly modular, able to attach great loads to the back of it. And we'll look forward to seeing it in service on the moon. Before we can deploy the ore truck or anything like that, of course, we need to scan for resources on the moon. And that's what you see here. We have a resource scanning probe that will scan for ore on the moon and it's about a one ton payload for this rocket. This rocket is the Reliant launcher and it is uh, probably overpowered for this particular launch but it is the smallest launcher that the EDB has built. It is meant to be a fully recoverable launcher with parachutes on the boosters and a fully recoverable center stack with with landing legs and everything. The key is whether the boosters can actually be recovered uh, without smashing their engines and that we will not test here. We'll be testing the recoverability of the center booster and so that is going to happen but we'll also be sending the ore detection satellite to the moon. And here is the launch. Uh, throttle is up, SAS is on and we are ready to go for the first test of the Reliant launcher and this should be a fairly straightforward test. 
very familiar parts being involved, very reliable engines, hence the name Reliant Launcher, and of course the engine, the core engine, is called the Reliant. Okay, the rocket is starting its pitch program here. It should be noted that the payload fairing weighs a ton, and so it weighs about the same as the payload that is currently on the rocket, though that's an undersized payload for this particular rocket. Uh, but we will want to get that payload fairing separated as soon as possible, and this scheduled separation point is 40 kilometers. The rocket will have a very smooth ascent profile here, and uh, you'll see it uh, staying very close to the prograde vector. It has adequate power and very good control thanks to its center engine. We're coming up on booster set here soon, and we should see the parachutes deploy on the boosters. Yes, we did, but we're not entirely sure how well they'll be recovered. The mass of the empty mass of the boosters is well under the capacity of those parachutes, but uh, that doesn't mean that they'll be recoverable given, well, given physics. Awaiting payload fairing separation here, and there it is, payload fairing separation. Of course, all those payload fairing pieces will be will be coming straight back down and probably burning up, hopefully. We don't want to litter the oceans, of course. But there you see the probe. Uh, very small bus and a very large dish for the scanning apparatus. Still, that small bus has quite a lot of delta V in it. It will handle the entire moon transfer, getting into orbit around the moon, making sure that the, that the satellite is in polar orbit and of course any further adjustments to the orbit that might be necessary. Okay, final bits of the burn. The launch is now at its intended orbit and we will have separation of the payload after it extends its solar panels and antennae. And there you see the solar panels opening and antennae will also extend. And after payload separation we will follow the the core stage back down and ensure that it reaches the surface safely so that funds from it can be recovered. Okay, payload is off. We'll have ignition of its engine and now back to the core stage. You can see that there's still substantial fuel in the core stage and that is indicative of the fact that this launcher can carry much more than just one ton to orbit, obviously. But anyway, that was what it was tasked to carry this time and it will maneuver towards its retro burn point and then attempt to come back down. The attempt will bring its periapsis to 30 kilometers at the retro burn point and so we'll see that burn momentarily here. Okay, retro burn successful and now we will see how it works on re-entry. Now it does have the substantial extra fuel and so if it turns out that 30 kilometers is not the correct periapsis for re-entry and a safe landing at the KSC, it has plenty of leeway to adjust that. The core stage of the Reliant rocket crossed the west coast of the home continent at approximately 32 to 33 kilometers in altitude, which was in the nominal range, however, going a little bit too far. It was overshooting, which is preferable since it had the fuel to slow down. Undershooting, of course, would leave it at risk of hitting the mountains, but uh, we'll soon see here that the program will will uh, start the engines up and attempt to bring it down at the KSC. Well, the, the system has certainly held out for as long as possible, but uh, we expect, yes, engine thrust here. And you can see the current trajectory on the map there. The engine is rapidly bringing that in, but will it be in time? The launcher is headed a little bit south of the KSC here and is under risk of hitting the coast, which is not even terrain, of course. But the engine is off. Up, oh, engine's on again. Come on, little Reliant. You can do it. Seems to be coming down too far south, but it's got parachute deployment here. 
Will it make the, the corner of the KSC, the southwest corner there? Or will it end up on the coast, which might be potentially dangerous for such a tall rocket? Well, as luck would have it, it didn't do too badly here. You can see that it is right on the margin there at the southwest corner of the KSC. But there is still the matter of sheer balance with, again, a tall rocket. We will see whether it can set itself down safely and be recovered, or whether it will tip over and therefore be a total loss. Okay, we have full parachute deployment. The rocket has begun to use some thrust in order to slow itself down to a safe touchdown speed on slightly uneven terrain here. And there we go. All right, well, it seems to be stable. We are waiting here, making sure it doesn't tip over, but it looks stable, and so we'll send out the recovery crews. The last order of business this time, of course, was sending the detection probe over to the moon. And here we see the beginning of the burn, the transmunar injection here. And this would be accomplished in two burns. So the probe will do part of the burn on this initial orbit and then go around the planet Kerbin and then do a second burn. The reason for this is of course because its engine is tiny. And so the tiny thrust of the engine means that it is a very long burn and to increase accuracy it's better to do the burn in two parts. Okay, should be ending here and that is the initial orbit after the first burn and the remainder of the burn will be done on the second go around. And again, this method of splitting up the burns into two different burns is about both accuracy and efficiency. Because of course any inaccuracy will lead you to have to do subsequent burns to correct that inaccuracy and therefore become less efficient. Anyway, uh, you see here that the probe put itself into a good approach to the moon. Not, not a great approach. The ideal approach would actually be somewhat inclined because the probe has to get into a polar orbit in order to function. So it will have to do an additional burn in order to correct its inclination, but it will handle that in Moon's sphere of influence. That correction burn required about 124 meters per second, as you can see here. Uh, quite a drastic change, but best done well away from lunar gravity. Probe having a little bit of trouble finding that maneuver node there. Come on. And with the conclusion of that burn, all that was really left was the burn for orbit, and then the probe would be in a fully functional situation here. Still has abundant fuel reserves for further adjustments, though those are unlikely to be necessary unless, for some reason, mission planners want to divert it over to Minmus. But chances are they will want to retain an or, or detection satellite around the moon. The OR detection satellite reached a nominal orbit as you see here. Approximately circular, though not perfectly so, but a perfectly circular orbit was not necessary in order to conduct scanning. And so we see here the beginning of the scanning mission and we will see the results momentarily as the data gets uploaded back to Mission Control. Recall that the probe has four antennas for redundancies. And there we have it, and that is the result. Now the probe gives many options about how to display these results and this data, and while mission planners are trying to figure out which version they prefer, I'll say uh, thank you for watching this presentation of new developments in the EDB, and we hope you'll join us for further missions and craft designs in future episodes. So, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.